Hey, so in this video, I'm going to show how to create a technical support agent which uses retrieval augmented generation. Uh, we're going to do it in local AGI and we're going to use its uh, sister project, local recall for the um, retrieval augmented generation. And the bot's going to connect to matrix. Okay. So first of all, um, I've already set up partially set up an agent I'm going to go to its settings so far all I've done is create it and I've got a system prompt to make it less verbose and the first thing we need to do is we need to let it connect to something so we're going to let it connect to matrix so I'm going to go and select matrix uh, it's running locally but um, local AGI is running inside docker and it's running outside docker so I have to use this address uh, to connect to it uh, put in the user ID of the bot which I created an account um, on matrix and uh, set up this account um, and I set up a token for it which I think is this one yeah so there you go. You have to you have to do that to yourself outside of um, local AGI, and then uh, we can set a room for it to connect to, which um, it's the room ID that we need to use is the automatically generated one. Uh, in Matrix, you can assign nice names to rooms, uh, but we can't use those at the moment. We have to use this one. And we're going to set it to room mode, uh, which means it will respond to any messages in that room. Usually you'd have to type in the agent's name for it to respond, but we can set this and it'll respond to all messages in that room. So we save changes. Um, then I can go and go to the agent list. Looking at the agent list, I can go to the status of the agent and we can see the agent has restarted okay and now if we go to here um, we can invite the agent's account to our room and l1 okay and say hello and see it that worked yes it's there quite snappy as well so if we go back to status we can see that we received that message and we said hello great okay so next thing we want to do um, I mean presently it will respond to any messages such as hello or um, isn't the weather awful and it'll you know, it responds with messages like that, which it's a technical support bot, so we don't want it to respond to idle chit chat like that, or even in things that just aren't a question, um, or in topics it can't answer. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a filter, going to create a, a classifier, which this classifier, we're going to use a smaller large language model. So the large language model that the main chatbot is configured with is the 12 billion parameter Gemma model, which is the biggest one I can run on my GPU. And then uh, we can specify a smaller one which all it's going to do is classify the messages as uh, questions for local AI. So we can use a much smaller model and let's say you had a chat room with a lot of volume in um, then you know you're not going to spend as much compute just deciding if you should respond to a message uh, we'll put allow on match which means that it goes through if it falls into this category and we'll set it as a trigger which means if we had more than one filter um, it only takes one trigger to to match to trigger the 
a response, um, but filters, all of the filters have to match. So triggers are ORed together and filters are ANDed together logically. So save those changes. Um, once again in the status we should see it's restarted. And now if we say something like um, something like that, we shouldn't shouldn't see a response to that. No, because it's failed to match any trigger. So now it's only going to respond to questions about local AI, hopefully. Most of the time. It is a probabilistic thing, so sometimes it may not may not respond anyway. Or it may respond to the wrong thing. So there's always a chance of that. But um okay, so next thing is we can ask it we can ask it some local AI technical support question now. Um not you should sorry, not what GPU, uh what what Docker image can I use with Intel GPUs. Uh in the local AI. You know, rather or you know, it's probably better ways of phrasing that question. But let's see if it responds. Okay, so I mean it's given a response that's completely nonsensical it's been very very concise this time in fact so it's, it's responded with stable diffusion intel gpu l yeah just random nonsense that's not a real image at least i doubt it is so what can we do next um well to ground it in reality we can add a memory setting um, so we can enable the knowledge base. So, so we include three results for each for each search. Um, and basically, the knowledge base, when it receives a message, it will look at the message content sent by the user and do a semantic search uh, using local recall. Um, so in local recall, each agent has a collection, and in that collection, we can have um, some documents, and these documents are broken down into chunks, and it does a semantic search on those chunks and returns the chunks that are most similar to our query. So we can say Intel GPU in here. Oh, we have to select a collection. And it should respond with um, chunks of files which match this. Um, so yeah, it's responded with some relevant information there. And in fact, um, it, it doesn't have to be, you don't have to have, uh, you know, you can try using video, just, just put the video card, like, don't think the phrase video card is ever mentioned, but it still responds somewhat with somewhat relevant results. So video card, it's it's matched against this chunk which is talking about NVIDIA and uh, CUDA. So you know it, it doesn't. It's not a keyword search. It's using uh, semantic search, and you can add entries to this either by uploading them in the GUI, or um, you can post them using the uh, REST API, which if you have a lot of documents you want to put in, then you can make a small script that does that. Okay, so that stuff's in there. Um, we've configured it, I think. Let's just double check that. So, okay, we've restarted. So now if we, if we, ask, if we ask it this question again, um, what? Local AI image can I use with Intel GPUs? Hopefully, this time we'll get a response that's a bit more accurate. Let's go back to the status. Local AI doesn't directly. Oh dear. I oh know.
that is very odd. So let's go and have a look at what it um because it's respond the localizer isn't directly spawn into GPUs. So I guess I guess that the uh the information it was given was not was not the best. So, okay, I think what we can do is we can increase the number of knowledge base results. Um, so, okay, save changes. So it seems like it um, it got some information about GPUs, but but uh, not the right ones. So, oh, oh, then we have a new message. You can use. We have two bots. We have two bots. What's going on? Ah, I know what it is. I restarted it, so it asked again. Okay, so yeah, I restarted the agent, and it looked at the last message and and uh, tried again. And this time, um, yeah, it's responded with a more sensible result. Okay, you can use. Uh, Local AI, latest, all-in-one GPU Intel F16. So yeah, that that is in fact the correct um, correct result. Uh, yeah, it's just a quirk of the matrix connector that when you restart the agent, it will look at um, one message from the history and respond to that. So obviously, it got my message there again and responded. Okay, so this time it got the right result after after I increased the number of knowledge base results. Um, the the way when you do a semantic search, it doesn't always come up with um, like the top result isn't always the best result. Um, there's things we can do to try and make that better, but it is again just probabilistic. So, but including more uh, more knowledge base results in there helped. Okay, and that's it. Um, hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks.